as a dungeon master, having monsters ready for our players to fight is pretty much our job, and it's crucial to having an awesome Dungeons & Dragons session, and today I'm going to show you how to add those to Roll20. Hey folks, I'm Alex Story, and this is Alchemist Fire. And uh, first off, I just want to apologize for the, the anime protagonist glasses I got going on. I found out that it looks like when I look at my screen, um, or at least directly at the camera, you get some of the, the glasses glare. Um, sorry about that. We'll try to figure that out. But uh, I have a feeling that you're more focused on the thing I'm going to talk about today, which is how to add monsters. And so we're going to focus on three things. So we're going to uh, focus on how to add monsters to your Roll20 game, what I call the easy way, which requires uh, buying the monsters manual. And then I'm going to show you how to add monsters the completely free from scratch way that uh, requires zero dollars, but just a little bit more time, a couple added steps. And then I'm going to show you how to use those said monsters in Roll20 once you have them created for your game. So first off, I'm gonna show you how to add monsters the easy way by buying the monsters manual on Roll20. But if you do not wanna spend money, skip to this section where I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this completely for free manually. So, all right, jumping into it. So the first thing you wanna do is just search for the monsters manual on Roll20 Marketplace. And so you'll need to be on the Marketplace page of Roll20 to do this. So once you search for it, it should be the number one thing. It's $30, so it does, cost uh, a little bit of a hefty chunk especially for being so old but they know it's crucial to playing Dungeons and Dragons so that they kind of keep it at that static price. I've noticed with Roll20 they don't really have discounts or coupon codes the way that D&D Beyond does. It's pretty much always at this price but uh, in my opinion definitely worth it because it saves you so much time when it comes to uh, prepping because it's super easy. Anyway uh, if you don't have the money to do it or you uh want to gift it to your dungeon master or a friend of yours and click gift here, or you can press wish list and hopefully like one of your players will gift it to you. If you are a DM for a long time, um, usually your players will reward you by gifting you stuff. I know at least mine do. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, you buy it. I already own it. So I'm just going to skip that step. And uh, once you're in your game, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add a monster to your game. So all you do is click on the eye under the compendium here, and then you're gonna go ahead and search for a monster that you want. So I'm gonna search for Beholder, because Beholders are the best monsters in the game. They can disintegrate you, they can like make you go to sleep, they can make you love the Beholder, they're awesome. And once you have the monster that you wanna to add to the game popped up in your compendium over here on the right, you just click on the monster, drag it onto the map. And you're, this is gonna pop up for you. This is the bio and info. You can read about the lore and all that. And then just a second later, the token will appear on the map. And then uh, you can you kind of see the character sheet. So you can use it just like you would, um, you know, any other character sheet for an NPC. And, and you can just click on things to make things happen. So I can go ahead and scroll all the way down to my uh, actions over here on the right. Hit bite. And boom, I can hit bite and, and hit somebody with it. Or I can use one of my eye rays. You know, let's say I can... I want to use, or I, well, first off, I have to roll. Um, I have to roll for it because I use a random I. So I would just roll a D10 over here. So roll a D10. And this is specifically for the beholder. Not all monsters are like this, obviously. And oh no, I got to use a petrification ray. And when I click on petrification ray, uh, this information is thrown out onto the map. So, oh look, you're, you're about to get petrified. You better roll a DC 16 dexterity saving throw. And so you're in the middle of the fight and all this stuff is happening. Um, I can click on anti-magic cone. It'll throw that information out into the chat so the, the players know why their magic isn't working. Um, all that stuff is there. And obviously you can make this private if you want to keep it secret, right? Um, rolling it only to the, the uh, game master. All right, so that's how easy it is. And uh, one thing I didn't show you is it also adds it to your journal. So now, as soon as you drag it onto the map, it adds this character, this NPC, into your journal. So if you ever want to access it in the future, you can click on it. And boom, there it is. You just got to click on it from your journal, and there is the beholder. So that's really all it is. Super, super easy. So now you're probably asking me, okay, now how do I do it from scratch? What if I want to make a custom monster? Or let's say I don't want to spend the dollars for you know either buying the monster's manual on Roll20 or rebuying it. Uh, by using, you know, you know, by having to buy the digital version when you already have the physical book. 
So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add a character, or a NPC, a monster, right here from uh, Roll20 from scratch. So the first thing you need is a character sheet that you're going to use a stat for. So I recommend if you have the physical monsters manual book, using that. Uh, or you can find stats online. Uh, one place that I like to go a lot is D&D Beyond. Their community pages have a lot of uh, community-made monsters that you can just use for free, which is nice. Uh, they're sometimes not the world's most balanced, but they're useful. Anyway, I have my monsters manual here, and so I'm going to go ahead and literally do the exact same thing, and uh, I'm going to use a beholder. So I'm going to go ahead and turn to page 28. That's where our beholder stat block is in the monsters manual, and I'm going to show you how to add that custom on the Roll20 page. So Really, it's very similar to how you make a character, a player character, and that's by clicking the add button and clicking on character. And then from there, you can name whatever you want. Uh, let's make a fun beholder name like, like Xandorok, you know, the cruel, right? Cool. That's a cool beholder name. And uh, we'll worry about images later. Uh, we're just going to get the stats in there. So Xandorok the Cruel. All right, cool. Uh, now I click on character sheet. And then you can use the character mancer, which you won't, because that's a third player character. Add it sheet directly or create an NPC. I'm going to click on create an NPC, and it changes the character sheet to the NPC style that you're familiar with. I'm going to go ahead and name it. So Xandarok the Cruel. He's a beholder. And then I'm going to copy and paste all the information from my stat block here in the book to the screen. Um, I'm going to quickly describe those and then I'll just add it and fast forward it. So obviously you have your NPC type here, your armor class, your skit, your, uh, your armor type, your hit points, and even the formula for how their health is decided. That's super important if you want to have, I'll just show you real quick what it, what it does. But if you, uh, for example, Beholder is 19d10 plus 7d6. Um, what you can do is if you want custom health for your Xandarok the Cruel, because he's not any normal beholder you can just click on it so you can you can click on it here and it'll do the math for you so whoops yep it looks like it did take those before i just taking forever to pop in the chat here but uh that's if you want custom health instead of the flat 180 that uh beholders normally have so anyway that's uh that's how that's what that does so anyway you would add all that in the speed if it has flying speed swimming speed burrowing speed all that there its attributes go here its saving throws go here and its skills go here so if you're new to Dungeons and dragons or just kind of like you know the monsters in general uh, maybe you're, you've never dm before most monsters don't really have a full character sheet so normally if i'm playing a, a player character I have my saves and my skills all filled out. I know exactly what my bonuses are, but NPC character sheets are very bare bones. They're meant to be used on the fly by DMs who have dozens, if not hundreds, of NPC sheets just kind of on the standby. So um, you really only need to add the things that your, your monster is good at, essentially. So, for example, a Beholder is only good at saving throws for intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So uh, it's got a plus eight to intelligence, it's got a plus seven to wisdom, got a plus eight to charisma, right? You don't have to fiddle with any of the zero ones. And same with skills. Uh, it doesn't have any other skills other than perception, which P, 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 P is right there. Cool. So perception is plus, uh, for, for beholder, plus 12. It's all those eyes. Uh, and then, you know, if you have any other senses, like custom senses, like dark vision, for example, you're going to find those here under, uh, under senses. So he has... Uh, dark vision, or it has, I should say, dark vision of 120 feet, and then passive perception of 22. So you got to be super stealthy for him not to see you. Uh, it does have a condition immunity, so it is it is it is immune to being prone. Imagine that, and uh, other custom stuff you can do here. Uh, well, or the action. So I'll show you that in just a moment. Let me go ahead and fill the rest of this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward this. Okay, uh, jumping back on the mic real quick, I just wanted to mention this. If your NPC can cast spells, you want to click this chat box here. And then you can customize what kind of spellcasting ability modifier it has. Uh, and let's say charisma for some reason. Let's say this beholder knows how to cast spells. And uh, make it charisma. And then from here, if you scroll all the way down, now it's uh, its spells kind of appear. And just like with a... Uh, with the player character, you can drag spells over. So let's say I wanted to, I don't know, um, 
it, this beholder can cast animate dead because it's like it, somehow it it likes you know necromancy right so you can go ahead and click and drag spells over and it'll show up here um so that's you can always add spells if you have like a more wizard focus thing or something a sorcerer some magic user of sorts you can also check a box for hazard reactions these are very common to uh lots of legendary creatures have certain reactions and and some heroes do like parrying and whatnot um i wouldn't bother adding opportunity attack here as a reaction because everybody can do that but uh, you can check that box for reactions if they have them. Beholders, let me just double check. They do not have a reaction. And uh, you can add legendary actions here. So beholders do get legendary actions. They have three legendary actions uh, per turn. And now when you put that in here, um, legendary actions will appear down here as well. And it fills out all that information. So uh, now you can add those customized legendary actions. So for a... Beholder, its legendary actions are the Eye Ray. So the Eye Ray is the only legendary action it can use. So we're going to type that in. Eye Ray, the Beholder, uses one random Eye Ray. Cool. That's its legendary action. Now you can also add some features it has. So if you click on the plus underneath kind of its, uh, its uh, challenge area here, which I forgot to put in, challenge i think it's a 13 right and you'll see that it automatically adds the xp for the challenge rating here um you can click on plus and add its special abilities so uh beholders are probably uh other than their big eyes and little eyes i guess um and the rays they shoot out of them it's known for its anti-magic cone that it shoots out of its face so uh did i spell that right i think autocorrect just it's not a real word so anti-magic cone the beholder So we've added the anti-magic cone there. Oh my gosh, that's all added. Just had to do a whole bunch of typing. And uh, for some reason, we added a custom animate dead spell to this beholder. Uh, now we want to add the action. So the actions are kind of the bread and butter. And uh, I don't know why I picked a beholder because beholder has a bajillion different actions or at least one long one, which is the eye ray and the 10 different types of rays that it can shoot out of its eyes. Um, uh, and the bite, it can also bite nom nom on your gob there so uh so with regular attack actions you can actually check this box to hit attack and it'll have some some uh some things you can fill out here so for example uh the range for this bite is just going to be five feet reach uh so you can type that in i think if you leave it blank it'll it'll be default the two hit on the bite is going to be a plus uh for the bite it's a plus five to hit and target is one target and the hit is uh 14 damage is flat so um when it comes to a lot of uh a lot of damage you have the flat damage which is either 14 or you can do the custom damage which for this monster is going to be a 4d6 and that's piercing so yeah cool and then if you had a description, you could put a description there, but uh, we're not going to worry about that. So there's the bite action. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cheat for this one just because I don't want to type this all out. But imagine you would have to type this all out if you wanted to add the eye ray uh, one by one for the eye ray's ability. Um, I am going to cheat and just copy and paste. There we go. And I believe, let me double check, that is everything we need for our Beholder. That is our Beholder. Um, one more thing uh, I guess I wanted to show you is adding the art. The art is super important because it's uh, uh, you want to have some awesomeness to your character. So to add the art, there's a, this is how you do it. So what I like to do is just Google stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in Beholder Cool Art on here and uh we're gonna find one that looks like our our super cruel beholder this one looks good and obviously you know if you're you know streaming or something you probably don't want to like just steal somebody's art and use it but since you're just playing on a private game you know that's how i kind of justify it so oh and i'm this is how quick it is to get cool custom tokens um is i can just talk while i'm doing it but basically 
this website does all this for free. So, uh, and you don't need to buy Photoshop. So it's called Token Stamp. If you go to Roll Advantage, you can find it. I'll put a link in the chat. And you literally just drag the picture that you just downloaded from Google onto it or Reddit or wherever. Maybe you got custom art uh, done by like an artist. Uh, you can just resize it and use this as kind of like your where you have your kind of token that you want uh, up in the top right to see where you want it centered. And then you can change the border tint. Let's say we want him to be more evil looking, so we're going to make it kind of like red and dark, right? And then, um, yeah, change some other cu customs. You can even add text, like his name can be in there if you want. But then, over here, you just hit Save Image As. And then uh, from there, you can go ahead and uh, add your art. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this over. That's his art of our good old Xandrock the Cool. Cruel, sorry. And we're going to go ahead and make give it a token. So we'll make it the same size of this guy here. We're going to, oops, it's kind of stretching it. So we're going to make it that big. So a little bit bigger. So we're going to make it as big as this token here. And now I'm going to go ahead and customize it. So we want to give this a health bar. So we're going to make sure it represents the character Xandrock the Cruel. Uh, sure, we'll show the nameplate. And then we'll have the green bar represent HP. So you can just type in HP to do that. Blue, I like to use AC. Um, and then just so we, we know what that is. Uh, if you really want to give it sight, you can. I don't bother giving my NPC sight because I'm the DM. Um, I don't necessarily need... The, the players will never see that, right? The players will never see the dark vision on a monster. So I don't bother going through all that like I would with a player character. But... Uh, yeah, there we are. We have our token, and then, um, whoops, let's make sure the health bar is visible here. So uh, we'll have it 180 out of 180. And now we have the health bar vis visible. Now if we're in the middle of a fight, somebody hits him for like 20 damage. Oh no, he's taking damage. Oh, boo-hoo. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that is the token, and now we can even make it better for Xandarok here and make this his default token. So we can click on this token that we have on the page here, hit use selected token. And now, whenever we wanna throw Xandrock in the map, if we click from our journal and drag, we'll get that token. Maybe we, maybe this wasn't a legendary enemy, maybe he's a minion. Maybe there's multiple Xandrocks the Cruels. You can throw out and have a whole bunch of them out here. But that's how you, uh, that's how you add artwork. All right, anyway, next step is how do you use them in a battle? So uh, it's really, really easy. So once you have it open, you literally just have to click on things. So if you want to use your bite, click on bite. It'll throw it in the chat here in just a moment. I don't know why things are taking forever to load. Uh, probably because I'm recording everything. But yeah, this is not a hit. Um, but let's say it would. I would click on attack here, and I would be able to see the damage. But uh, yeah, that's how you add monsters to D&D. Super easy. You don't have to really worry about it. Uh, both methods are honestly pretty quick a uh, monster manual is a lot quicker but if you use a lot of the same monsters you could definitely uh get get away with uh you know just making things custom and adding them from scratch and adding things from scratch does have the benefit of being able to add custom art so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and uh if you liked it leave a like and feel free to subscribe to alchemist fire for more videos especially if you're looking to learn more gm tips on roll 20 Bye for now.